Joe Button said very emphatically, might I add, take his name off the list of people that you think are on those tapes at the Diddy parties. Yeah. And he said that. He said he was getting a lot of speculation and all that. I think we um we at a place where people think if you you know, if you successful, especially like where we are now, it's like if you successful, you was down with it. But with Joe Budden, I could see it a little bit more because remember, Joe, if I'm not mistaken, Joe Budden had a show on Revolt at one time. I think one of his shows at some point was on Revolt. I remember him on there talking, talking about when a conversation he had with Puffy in regards to all of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, he had a conversation. Puffy was like, yo. Do this, do this. He said, just don't do... He was like, just don't do something. He said, don't throw nothing. I don't know. I don't think he said don't throw. But the other thing, he was like, don't hit nobody. Joe was like, when he said that, you know, I took it to understand that he knows how important it is to not hit people. But also, Joe said, I stumbled across, you know, when, you, when you're watching the YouTube and the video go off and they just, the algorithm just throw another video on. A clip from from the Joe Budden podcast came on where he was, they were the cast. They was talking about this hip hop psychic that they had on the show, and it was like it was a Patreon episode, so I didn't really see it. And the hip hop psychic was talking about this one and that one, or somebody who was about to go down, you know, in the industry, like big figures that was about to go down in a, in a nasty way. Pause and. Joe said something along the lines. He was like, he was like, yo, um, he was like, he didn't believe that what she was saying wholeheartedly, but he did believe that there was a good chance that somebody, he said, like two people was, was, was going to be in hot water within the next, I don't know, uh, 10 months, I mean, six months, however many months. But that video, the one I'm talking about was posted six months ago. When did all this Diddy madness happen? It started in November. November, December, January, March, April, June, July, August. It's 10 months ago. But yeah, um, damn, do I, I think I, I thought I put this video, I thought I recorded it in my phone when I was, um, when I was seeing it, like I saw Joe Butt, I'm like, hold on, let me grab this little clip right here, right here. But since my phone been acting stupid, I can't, um, I can't guarantee that I did that. You know what I'm saying? That's why my, um, some of my videos been cutting off at towards the end. You know what I mean? Like, because my phone, my phone is full of, it's, it's full of memory. So I had to get up the other day and go get another phone and whatnot. I knew I needed to do that anyway, but. You know, sometimes a little push is all you need. So, yeah, it doesn't look like I have that clip. Anyway, but, yeah, six months ago, that happened. Well, the Joe Button podcast posted or something six months ago. On, um, on to good news. Well, I don't know if this news is good, but it's good, according to your perception. I spoke to my, my friend. I know I've been telling y'all that I had a conversation one of my rapper friends and um I had I had something I wanted to tell y'all. I wanted to speak to him to find out if he wanted his name omitted from this truth. And he said he's fine. He does not need that. So without further ado, about a week or so ago, I was driving home from Brooklyn. I was driving to Long Island from Brooklyn, right? And it was um, early in the morning. Like I broke day, I, you know, I stayed out the night or whatever. I'm driving back and I got my playlist. And I told y'all about my playlist. I drive to YouTube playlists I create, you know what I'm saying? And I'm listening to my alcoholics playlist and all of that. And I, uh, I'm jamming, you understand what I'm saying? He's on the way to the club, puffing on the blood. You never get along with you always get love. You're drinking and drinking and drinking all the time. I'm having a ball. 
It's time to roll my sleeves up. Fuck a few MCs up. Another alcoholics get busy. If y'all ain't fans, get involved. They got albums and years worth of stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. I get to the crib, pass out, wake up, go to the bathroom, come lay back in the bed, or go lay back in the bed, and my phone rings. And it is none other than J-Roll from the Alcoholics. Now I say to myself, I went to, I damn near went to sleep listening to the Alcoholics. And I wake up and the bro ro, the ro bro is on my phone right now. Now I could have, you know, I'm, I'm real funny style about answering my phone. I'm real serious about my rest. But I, I, I wanted to go back to sleep. But because I felt like it was a sign from the universe that I went to sleep listening to this this, this man's music and I wake up and he's on my phone, I answer it. He's like, yo, what up? I'm like, he's like, you sleep? I'm like, nah, I'm good, bro, man, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm saying what it is. Um, and he goes, yo, I just now finished watching your blog, and it was a Diddy blog, right? And I was just, I don't know, I guess in this, in this particular vlog, vlog, not blog, I think blogging is only writing, but anyway, in this particular vlog, I was talking about the, you know, the industry and, you know, all of the weird things that go on in the, in the, in the industry that come with all of these biases, you know, the way the game is rigged and all of that. I think I was alluding to that in the blog, but he told me, he was like, you're right. He's like, I just finished watching your blog and I felt like I got to call my boy. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, what I do? He's like, nah, you good. I'm like, he said, a long time ago, around the year, I don't know, 2003, 2004, something like that. He said there was this meeting. Now, I've heard about this meeting before that he's talking about. Some of you may have heard about the meeting as well. The meeting was between, a, it involved a whole bunch of record executives, right? And, um, and like big wigs, it was a secret meeting. And in this meeting, they planned, they, they, un, they unveiled a plan to turn the hip hop community and the music industry into a pipeline into the industrial prison system. You know, like a lot of the people who was owning the, the, the industry was owning prisons as well, or in cahoots with owning prisons. And they was trying to feed the prisons because it's a lot of money in the prison system, right? Now, I heard this story before. I'm sure you can go on YouTube and find Crazy Bone telling this story, too. I don't I don't know the uh, the name. Well, you just kind of cool to have two phones. I always said I wanted to get two phones because I can do the research while I'm on the phone. But anyway, Crazy Bone was telling this story about this meeting. You know what I'm saying? And in this meeting, they was talking about all kind of, you know, it, it was a list of all of the music that was currently out, all of the artists or whatever. I'm paraphrasing, you know, I'm freestyling a little bit. It was like, here's a list of names you are not allowed to play. Like, the, like whether it's radio niggas, you know, radio executives or whatever, whoever was in that meeting, it was like, these people get no love. If you play these records, you will be immediately terminated, right? Now, I heard this story from Crazy Bone, I heard it before Crazy Bone. I heard it from some other nondescript, I don't want to say nondescript, no disrespect, but I don't remember who it was, right? And then I also seen it in print floating around the industry, I mean, floating around the internet years ago. And I never talked about it. Like I've had, I've talked about it with, you know, in private, but I never mentioned it publicly or, 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 you know, outside of my inner circle because I didn't know it was true. You know, the, the Willie Lynch story or theory or book, like as much as that the Willie Lynch papers made sense, as much sense as it made, someone came out and said that it wasn't real. And, and half of our population feel, you know, half, half of the community feels, believes that. So me personally, I know a wise man knows that he knows nothing. So I'm, I can't say for sure whether that's true. You understand what I'm saying? So I never really talked about it. I never really talked about it 
because I didn't have no inside knowledge of it. But here we are on this day a couple of weeks ago, j Row was on my phone telling me about this meeting. Hmm? Was he in it? No, he was not in the meeting. His man was in the meeting, right? Somebody that, somebody that he knows, right? I don't know if he worked with him or whatever, but this was a time when the Alcoholics was, the fourth album had just dropped. It was doing good. They had a, they had a single produced by Pharrell. This was banging. Like it was probably one of them. They had some, they had some banging, but this, you know, it was probably one of their most radio friendly hits. He was like, they spins was way up. You know what I mean? Everything was going well. And his man came to him and was like, yo, bro, this shit is over. You're like, what are you talking about? We're doing great. We're on, we on, we on our way to the moon right now. My cab coming right now. It's like, no, you don't understand. Y'all are done. We are done. This whole, it's, it's done, done. And his man basically showed him the list. You understand what I'm saying? He said some people got up, walked out the meeting, so on and so forth, all of that. He was like, his man got up, walked out the meeting, if, 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 if I'm not mistaken, right? He was like, yo. He said, he showed me the list. He said, and we were on it. And so were y'all. Meaning, they were, and so was me and my niggas. I just called. <laughs> Listen, I, I, tried, I, I, was about, I tried to record the phone call where I was calling them, asking them for, you know what I'm saying? I was going to add it in to the, uh, to, the, to the blog and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, he said he didn't mind, so... So here we go. So now here I am with a person that I trust. I don't trust people like that. So if I trust you, you're probably pretty trustworthy. And if, and if you, and if you, sidebar, if you ever make it so I can't trust you, it ain't no coming back from that. All right. So anyway, you, this is somebody I know. I love, j Row is my bro. I love j Row, right? <laughs> The alcoholics are responsible for me getting some of the most money I ever got in my life. That's a whole nother story, right? But anyway, so it's not just hearsay. It's not just something I'm seeing on the, on the internet. I mean, on the internet, the internet. I don't know Crazy Bone. I mean, I know him, but I don't know him. Like, I never actually met him. So I don't, you know, every time somebody was telling a the story, they was always, you know, omitting certain facts or omitting names. Like, you know, I can't say no names, certain things I can't say. So I, eh, but now to have my homeboy, my homeboy telling me what he told me, oh, oh, it's true. I believe it wholeheartedly now. Can't tell me? Nope. Yes, I do. And so that's why. So all of the people, I mean, granted, listen, this was in two. This was this meeting was in 20, 2003 or twenty oh four or something like that. You know, um we really did most of our dirt. I mean the good dirt we did as boot camp clip. We did that in the nineties. So I can't really say that that's why we never went platinum. You understand what I'm saying? We did most of our good dirt in the nineties. We also got blackballed in the nineties. So, you know, it you know, I was trying to see, I was trying to match up the years to see if it all linked up together. But in 2004, even though we hadn't done all our dirt, these niggas like, keep these niggas buried. Like, what was it? Matter of fact, 2003, Boot Camp Click put out their second album, our second album, although I wasn't on it. Right? I was on some bullshit. But, um, but yeah, that was during the time I was separate on, you know, on my, my um, AWOL soldier, whatever. But yeah, that's wild. What y'all think about that? Oh yeah, the Crazy Bone video, I just, I found it. It's called, let me see, Crazy Bone exposes private prisons that are linked to rap music. See it? Yeah, this happened. And when is this? How old is this video? Let me see. Let me see. This video four years old. And that's just whoever's platform this is on YouTube. You understand what I'm saying? So this is not a new story, but 
I just have new insight on it. And, I, and for me to know whole heart, like only thing I, like I wanted to, I, I wanted to ask j Row if he wanted his name omitted, but I also wanted to know which variation of us was on the list. Was it boot camp? Was it Helter Skelter? You know what I'm saying? Was it rocking his mom? I mean, cause look, in the early 2000s, that's when priority, priority wreckage successfully separated me from my family. I was a herd for that. I was that, that, that was that was whacking me. You know what I was saying? Listen to my song um Rock After Price. It's off the Rockness AP album. Listen to that song. I I, I speak about it on there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I just Can you believe that? Y'all believe that? I mean, I can say I, I can say that I already believed it, but to know that my name was on there, oh yeah, he didn't remember wholeheartedly whether it was the boot camp click or it was Helter Skelter you know, on the list. I know that BET Black Ball list had Buckshot, Black Moon, Smith & Wesson, and Boot Camp. So they was like, <laughs> they was like Buckshot, you out of here, and all them niggas that run with you. I don't care what they call. I don't care what y'all calling yourselves. Nah. Don't try to sneak in here with them. Anyway. I'm going to get out of here. If y'all made it to the end of this video, let me get uh, four of those hmm, emojis. All right. If you made it to the end of this video, then welcome to the nation. I'm your host, Mr. Monster Man Rocco. It's Monster Nation, that is. I'm the king around here. The president, I'm the landlord, owner, tenant, the janitor. I mop the damn floor. <clears throat> like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe. Hit the bell for all the notifications. Send us a cash app or a super thanks if you're trying to be a taxpaying citizen of the nation. We actually prefer the Cash App. The Cash App tag will be in the description along with the Bandcamp link for all of those of you who would rather hear me rap than to hear me yap. I got wild music on there, mixtapes, mixed a, a, a joints, songs and freestyles that I'm pretty sure you never heard. So get involved to get a job. If you made it to the end of this video, I said four of these emojis, the little hmm, emojis, because this is some yeah, anyway, rock on, rock going. I'm out. Love y'all.